everybody it's been a while well for me it has last time i did film the video was like on monday so it's been like four days i got a haircut if you don't even care so it's then in a year about two days three days it will be 2018 and 2017 has been a it's been an interesting year, to say the least. I mean, Marvel dominated. The DCU imploded. Uh, Disney bought Fox. Uh, the whole... Just the wave of like sexual harassment scandals that happened in such a short period of time. It's been... It's been a mix of ups, downs, and... I don't know. So yeah, hopefully 20, 2018 is a bit better. But we're going to do a top 10. I've done this before, so I might as well do it now. Top 10 best movies of 2017. I have them all written down because 2017, i actually seen a lot of good movies. These are the ones that really stuck with me after I saw them. And before I get on, I have an honorable mention. Right out the gate. Uh, Blade Runner 2049. If I had a top 11 list, it would be on there, but we need a top 10. It has to be professional. The reason why it's not on there is because, well, it's a really good movie that just people just did not understand. The ending really underwhelmed me, like in a bad way. Like when, after I saw it, I was just like, oh. Well, that was weak. See, that's the only reason why it's not on this list. And uh, some other movies that I thought were good, but just weren't good enough to be on my uh, top 10. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 it was fun, but not as fresh as the first movie. Uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yes, I know, the ever so controversial Last Jedi that has dis nearly destroyed the fan base. I like the movie, but it has some serious problems, especially with a completely pointless side plot with Rose and Finn. They could have just thrown that out the movie. They could have just cut that out that whole part entirely. Um, I don't think I'm well, split. I thought it was really good, but still didn't make it. Um, other ones I'm just gonna throw out there randomly. Uh, Lego Batman I thought was disappointing. Um, especially compared to Lego movie. Beauty and the Beast was fine, even though it's just simply just remaking the the original animation. Kong Skull Island was fun. I didn't like it as so much as Godzilla. Power Rangers was better than I expected. Uh. Mm. I don't think oh Jigsaw well a lot of people didn't like it I sure did because I'm a I'm a huge Saw fan and I loved it so and a Happy Death Day also I really like man 2017 has been a really good year for horror and I mean really good like so much high quality content but anyway it's got the real list this list number ten Wonder Woman now. I know, per, now some of you might get mad at me for saying this, but I think Wonder Woman is a bit overhyped, a bit overloved. It's still a good movie, but I think it was just pushed way over the top because everyone was just like, oh my gosh, this would be a game changer for women in film. And it will be, definitely. Compared to like other female superhero movies, it is eons ahead of all of them and i review well maybe not catwoman that movie is still amazing in my eyes but wonder woman is close i mean gal gadot is one of the only good things about the dcu she is so well cast I like chris pine and steve trevor the movie actually had color it was a darkness and whatnot filming was good well the cgi was lacking a bit it's 
it does still then distract, you know, from everything else that made the movie good. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Wonder Woman. Number nine, War for the Planet of the Apes. Not a lot of people saw this movie. I'm like, why? It's so good. I guess the dark tone turned everybody off, but I mean, it is really good. The, this recent Planet of the Apes trilogy is one of the best trilogies ever in recent memory. See, um, Andy Serkis' Caesar is great. Visually, it's amazing. Um, it does not have quite the happy ending, at least for us humans in the movie. Yes, I mean, well, it did get pretty slow in parts. It kind of just dragged on. But since, you know, it was Caesar, I was still invested. And, uh, yeah. I wish I made more money, though. It's a shame. Number eight, John Wick, Chapter Two. I love the John Wick movies. I love the first one, and I really love the second one. Because the second one, it really, like, uh, expanded the world of John Wick from the first one. Because the first one, it was about, you know, like, it hints of, like, the secret organization of, like, assassins, this world. And it's fully explored, like, in the second one. You see all this crazy stuff. And you can literally just do a kill count of how many people John Wick just kills. It's amazing. And I'm so hyped for part three, uh, chapter three. I mean, Keanu Reeves, the man's a legend. He's amazing. So, can't wait for chapter three. Hope they knock it off the park. Number seven, Dunkirk. If you've never seen my videos, you know I really, really like Christopher Nolan movies. And while I still prefer the Dark Knight trilogy as, like, his biggest accomplishment... Dunkirk is still really good. That's like, this is actually the shortest movie ever. Most of the movies are really long. This one's really short. And some people have, this movie's got a bit of criticism because, well, like, there is no characters really latch on to. And personally, it wasn't about the characters, it was about the situation, the war, you know, the battle on Dunkirk. Visually, it's amazing. Music is amazing. The score is really good. Uh, acting is really good. Yeah, no problems with Dunkirk. And hopefully, Christopher, Nol Christopher Nolan's uh, next movie is great. I hope he gets at least some recognition from the Academy from uh, Dunkirk. Or at least gets a nomination, directing nomination or something. Because if he doesn't, I'm going to be really... Ticked off. So number six, Thor Ragnarok. Now the Thor movies, they haven't been the most popular. So it was clear Thor needed a whole, like I wouldn't say re reboot, but more of like a, a soft reboot of the character, and they changed it up for, definitely for the better. I mean, the movie's extremely you know, colorful. You know, it's visually impressive. Um, Thor is great as a character. They finally... Because um, the problem was that they tried to make him human. But in here, we finally get to see him for what he is. And he's great. I mean, Hulk's there too. And he's good. All the acting is really good. In the movie. By far, and away the best Thor movie. And, uh... Yeah, can't wait for Infinity War to see him, you know, interact with the Guardians. Should be awesome. That's the story I can rock. Uh, number five. The movie you all didn't expect to be this high. Some of you did. Uh, Baby Driver. This is a... Actually, when you know, all of these, like, this is one of the more smaller movies. Well, in terms of, like, because some of these movies made hundreds of millions of dollars but this one it really stuck with me after i saw it i ended up not watching despicable me 3 still haven't seen it not playing on it anytime soon to see the uh, baby driver instead i had a blast watching baby driver the acting is really good uh i like how like they uh they did an interesting thing where the music 
connect to literally the movie and what's going on in the movie. So they're like interconnected. It has some great songs, you know, a good plot. Everything you know I want in like a summer movie. And I'm glad it did really well. Let Edgar Wright was was, you know, able to rebound after getting kicked off of Ant Man. So I'm glad. Number four, it. How could this not be on here? It is amazing. After the disaster known as the Dark Tower, haven't seen it, never will see it. Uh, everyone looked forward to it as being, and everyone thought like it was going to be, like, they were going to screw it up because the original, well, was not great. Except for Tim Curry, he was great. Everything else was just, nah. This movie. Oh man, they got everything right. Pennywise. And yes, Pennywise, while well, he did have the meme worthy dance, if you, you know, if you look on the internet, you'll find it. Uh, he was still really good as Pennywise. As like a creepy clown. All of the child actors were amazing. They were amazing. And they acted like, you know, real kids. They weren't like sanitized you know, type of kids where, like, they're all, like, act like adults. No, these kids curse. They say all the words when, you now adults were around. That's how they are. So it's a lot of accuracy. We had some great moments, especially in the beginning. Well, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, and if you haven't, what are you doing? I mean, uh, when uh, Georgie like, got his, like, arm ripped off, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Oh my god, that was like, well, only, that was like the first time in a long time I really felt like that in the beginning of a movie, and it really just hooked me throughout the whole thing, and I can't wait for chapter two when it comes out in 2019. Number three, Spider-Man Homecoming, the best Spider-Man movie since Spider-Man 2, obviously, actually since the whole Sam Raimi trilogy. Because Spider-Man, he's on a very bumpy road. I mean, everyone liked the original with Sam Raimi. Everyone loved the sequel. The third was not all that good, but I enjoy it. Amazing Spider-Man was lackluster when you really look back at it. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was trash. And so Sony thought the only thing they could do was team up with Marvel. To bring Spider-Man back to life. To inject new life into him. And everyone got a taste of him in Civil War. And now he has his own movie. And it's great. Tom Holland is... I mean, so granted, like, Tommy McBarr will always be Peter Parker and Spider-Man. I mean, uh... But Tom Holland, if... Well, probably after Infinity War, he will be the ultimate Spider-Man. <laughs> Uh, that was a weak pun. But yeah, he's great. He actually looks like a teenager. He doesn't look like a 25-year-old. You know, in, in the high school. Looks a lot more realistic. His friend Ned is hilarious. Michael Keaton is great. As a uh, vulture. One of the only really good villains in MCU. Other than Loki. Visually, it's good. Uh, story-wise, it's good. I'm glad they didn't just go for another origin story because that was just would have been another waste of time. And yeah, can't wait to see him in Infinity War and cannot wait to see him in Homecoming 2. And I also can't wait to see the new Spider-Verse movie coming out next year. So, I mean, Spider-Man is at a high. As long as Sony doesn't screw up, uh, Spider-Man, it looks, there'll be brighter days for Spider-Man. Which is great. Um, one and two. It is hard to decide which one was better than the other because both of these movies, I saw them early in the year. They're the top two movies I saw, and they stayed that way since. So number two, Get Out. This is a movie that is just. It was incredible. Every point of view, it was incredible. The acting was amazing. Uh, you, know, you know, this mainly it managed to juggle, you know, 
social commentary and you know and I like, it's not much of a horror movie it's more of a suspense movie and you don't know what's gonna happen next and it's also really funny because this is made by Jordan Peele the fact that he made this you know him coming from like Key and Peele and sketch comedy is amazing you know, he did this movie and it became an incredible success too and yeah Get Out is definitely if if Get Out does not get an Oscar nomination, it probably will because the Academy are not that stupid. Well, granted, they are pretty stupid. They did some real stupid things, like not nominating the Lego Movie, not nominating Deadpool when they could have could have saved them ratings. It's just they're so dumb. But yeah, Get Out. If it doesn't get nominated, we're gonna have serious problems. Number one, the big one. Probably one of the best superhero mo hero movies ever. Logan. This movie, it is not an X Men movie at all. Like kind of like, it, like it doesn't feel like your typical X Men movie. It is. This movie is dark. It's quite sad at times. I mean, it has some little moments of you know, funny stuff, funny in a way, but it's dark. Sad and sad. I mean, Hugh Jackman, this is his best performance as Wolverine ever. By a long shot. Considering this is his last time in the role, unless he reprises his role in a Deadpool movie, which I'd like to see. I'm glad he, like, went out on top. Patrick Stewart was also incredible, like, as Professor X. Like, and, uh, Daphne Keane as X-23 great oh and this movie since it's rated r we finally get to see wolverine in his violent glory just slicing through dudes it was fantastic and so yeah i'm glad fox like fox has been doing a lot of risky stuff first they did deadpool which made a whole lot of money and then they did logan which made a whole lot of money now they're doing like new mutants and then Deadpool 2, and then they're going to go back to mediocrity in Dark Phoenix. And then after that, all the X-Men are going to the MCU. So, yeah. It is, I mean, we don't know all the situations. We don't know if Fox will still, still be able to do these movies. I mean, Disney did say they want more of an adult, adult division. And they did say Deadpool is, they understand... Like, you know, what makes that, you know, sell a like Deadpool such like a valuable brand. Hopefully they don't mess up. So yeah, that's my top 10 list of the year. I will do a top 5 worst movies 2017 uh, very soon, actually. So, you know, look forward to that. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment. I will see you all next time. I am... Out of here.